the code structure can be explored through dependency graphs. Here is the NOOP Commerce open source project application map. By default, the node size is proportional to the number of lines of code, and the edge width is proportional to the coupling strength between two nodes. We can unfilter third party to show system. Clusters are introduced to make the graph more readable. Here is the same graph without clusters. An undo system lets us navigate back and forth. Let's search the logic related to customer in this graph. Then keep only the namespaces matched by the search and expand those namespaces to get a graph of all the classes related to customer. Let's go back to the application map. Let's expand this customer's namespace to also show children types. By unzooming, we can see how this customer logic fits in the entire application. A help panel explains the color convention. Dark red highlights the elements selected. Nodes using the selected elements are green. Nodes used by the selected elements are blue. And nodes mutually dependent are red. Incoming and outgoing edges are also colored accordingly. Lighter green, blue, and red are used for indirect usages. Elements non-related to customers can be discarded by clicking this Keep Dependents link. Let's unselect the noop.services assembly and update the layout from top to bottom. When no node is selected, pointing to a node with the mouse instantly colors its callers, callees, and corresponding edges. By clicking the Edit Code Query link, we can see the code query generated when we've right-clicked the noop.services assembly. Hovering over an element matched by the query points to it in the graph. Double-clicking an edge generates a coupling graph. Here are classes and methods involved in the coupling between the customers and events namespaces. Coupling graph is also made of elements matched by a generated code query. The query result lists details of used elements and users' elements. This cycle link generates a code query that lists dependency cycles between namespaces. Let's export this cycle to the graph. Here are 30 namespaces all depending on each other. To get rid of cycles, all double arrow red edges must be refactored into single arrow edges. To do so, analyzing the coupling graphs obtained from the red edges will help. Note that this 30 namespaces graph can be simplified with clusters. When one or several elements are selected, some links propose to generate call graphs. Let's simplify this call graph by choosing a call depth of 2. The graph can be exported to the SVG vector format, and to the PNG bitmap format. The graph elements can also be exported to the dependency matrix view presented in another video. All graphs can be persisted and then reloaded. Actually, a graph is persisted as a list of actions and not as a list of nodes. This is preferable because when the code changes, persisted graphs are reflecting the changes. Let's be clear that the graph can be used to navigate through very large applications. Here are all the .NET core assemblies and their namespaces. Let's search for the generics collections namespaces. Then let's expand and filter only public classes. Here is a dependency graph of all generic collections of .NET Core. In this video, we've seen that dependency graph can be used to handle a wide variety of scenarios. It will be great to help to understand, navigate, refactor, and improve the architecture of your application.